Yo, recently, along with the resurging paranoia about new COVID cases in the senior apartments where I live, an elderly woman poked me in the side and warned me for putting my tote bag on the food table. Never touch any food. She said the, that people would be concerned with germs and that she was helping me not get in trouble with management. I presume she was a liar. Didn't give a damn about me. Had her own hangups, including germophobia. I guess her jollies from fault finding. And if she crawled into the apartment complex furnace and incinerated herself a billion times, more germs than which exist upon my bag would be eliminated. No, my hateful attitude against such a slight is not Christ-like, although I made a faith decision decades ago. The ideal response should be being gracious and humble. But I live with my hypercritical parents most of my life who tell me, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that, every five minutes, relentlessly correcting me for everything they could conceive of. Due to that abuse, intense resentment flames up against any criticism, even if I might be at fault. And nobody should be poking anyone with their finger anyway and pretending that the complaint comes from someone else instead of admitting that they're the one with the issue. Here's an interesting piece of history. Centuries ago, troublesome women were sometimes made to wear a prank, a special type of muzzle. This so-called scold's bridle was used as an instrument of punishment for women whose hearts ch chiding was a source of annoyance to others. It was fastened upon the head with an iron part that fit the mouth, making speech impossible. And here are some interesting hyperbolic scripture texts. Matthew 7, 3-5 Why beholdest thou the wooden speck in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the log in thine own eye. Or how wilt thou tell thy brother, let me remove the speck from thine eye, and behold, the log is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the log from thine own eye, and then thou shalt thou see clearly to remove the speck from thy eye. Brothers, Matthew twenty three twenty four ASV. Jesus addressing the Pharisees, ye blind guides that strain out the net and swallow the camel. Back then, people strained gnats and other bugs from soups and beverages as opposed to throwing them out. Yet instead of attacking their attempt at sanitation as unsanitary. Though they were leaving behind a million times more germs than I'm criticized for, Christ even labeled it petty. That is, petty compared to their hypocrisy. The first response to someone who launches a complaint against you should be self-examination. If we're truly at fault, we ought to correct ourselves, but after that, if you see that some people are nitpickers or overly critical, sometimes a proper response would be politely but firmly confronting them about it. But many such people, especially the elderly, are set in their ways and refuse to change. They could be, a, they could be 200, 300, 500,000 years old. It's the same damn personality. They might even be glad that you're upset over their constant criticism. In those cases, completely avoiding them permanently is best. If that's not possible, avoiding them to the extent that is possible. Life is way too short to be wallowing in constant conflict. You probably don't want to live your remaining years being hateful or resentful or be either like me. I don't I don't want that. Or feeling humiliated, harassed, kicked at or whatever. Either like me. I don't want it either. We don't I don't I certainly dim dim don't like it. We need happy thoughts. And need to seek wholesome things 
that will uplift us. As for me, if you're a fellow believer, pray for me that I find such peace.